to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, uh, <coughs> last night, I don't think we had too much of a listening audience. They had uh, an Aurora Borealis over Maine, where the uh, transmitter is. And uh, I think the signal was skipping from Monticello, Maine to Kennebunk, Maine, and that's about as far as it went. Uh, normally, they can't get it in Kennebunk very well, because uh, if you're close to a shortwave station... It sort of skips right over you. Uh, but last night, they were getting the <laughs> broadcast really well in Kennebuck, Maine. So apparently, it was going straight up and coming straight down almost. Um, an aurora borealis is a tremendous magnetic disturbance around the Earth and in the atmosphere. And uh, also across the uh, country, in the uh, northwest United States, all across uh from border to border across the uh, top half of the United States and uh, portions of the uh, East Coast and the, some of the southeastern states were having some pretty bad weather. Pretty bad weather. And uh, so it's questionable whether many people heard the broadcast last night at all. And uh, so <clears throat> I'm just here to tell you that uh, <laughs> uh, it was a good one. And uh, you can uh, call Annie at this number tomorrow and find out how to order the tape if you want to have it. Tonight, I'm going to start off by opening the phones and asking a question. I want somebody to answer it. Who or what is the bright and morning star? Who or what is the bright and morning star? The number is 520 Seven, eight. It has everything in the world to do with tonight's broadcast. So if you think you know the answer, give me a call right now. 520-333-4578. The question is, who or what is the bright and morning star? Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, Bill, this is John David. Uh, the bright and morning star is Satan. Uh, well, you're close, but you're not right. Lucifer? No, you're not right there either. Um, if you have a Bible concordance, look it up in the Bible concordance and go to the verse. You'll find it in the New Testament. And uh, But anyway, that's the incorrect answer. In a, in a way, you're right. Okay, we're going to check it right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 520 Who or what is the bright and morning star? Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Bill. Yes. I would say, is it ISIS? No, it's not ISIS. It's not ISIS. Nope. Well. <laughs> that's a good try, though. It's into the mysteries. I, 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 the last call was, I, I would have said the last call was two choices, but it's not ISIS, huh? No. Uh, nope. I'll let you know, you know, how close you guys were and all that kind of stuff but, uh, as soon as we get the correct answer. Bill. Yes. What are you going into this evening? Well, it has, a, it has a lot to do with this. If you're asking a question like that. Well, not really, no. No? Nope. Oh. Just stay tuned. <laughs> right, Bill. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578. Who or what is the bright and morning star? Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. Hi. I need you to talk a lot louder. Hi, Bill. Yeah. It's in the last chapter of the Bible, and it's Jesus. You're right. The bright morning star is Jesus. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, how did you know? Well, I, I remember reading it. Okay. I'm looking for it right here. I'd, uh, um, uh, chapter 22, 16, yes, verse 
16. That? I, Jesus, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Fantastic. You see, there are some people out there who've been paying attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. I really appreciate it. Okay, now, <clears throat> why was David, why was John uh, David half right? Has anybody got the answer to that? Why was John David half right? Who has the answer to that? Why, when he said Satan or Lucifer, was he half right? Or could he have been right if he had been listening to the wrong, or, or at the wrong time, or misinterpreted something somewhere along the way. Anybody got the answer to that? 520-333-4578. Come on, you've got to know the answer. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill. Hey. The question was, uh, why was he half right? Yeah. Because uh, Lucifer or Satan is referred to, I believe it's in the Psalms, as the son of the morning star. Yes, that's correct. The son of the morning star and Lucifer... Our Satan is the great deceiver. Right. And he masquerades as who? Uh, the source of light. Then. The source of light. He, and he masquerades also, in, in many instances, as Jesus, doesn't he? Take your pardon? He has masqueraded in instances as Jesus. Yes. He does that. Yes. Yes, and today they call themselves what? Uh, that will be the Illuminati. The Illuminati, the sons of light. Yes. Angel cast out of heaven, the angel of light cast out of heaven, represented in mythology as Prometheus, who, what? Gave man the gift of light, fire, intellect. Yes. Follow me? Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but I thank you for your call. You, you were right on the money. Okay. So, um, John, when he, John, the first caller, was right. If he was referring to Lucifer or Satan impersonating himself as the bright and morning star. And, uh, of course, Jesus is the bright and morning star. But Satan likes to deceive and likes to impersonate. But uh, I wanted everybody to understand that, because as we start off the broadcast with a particular song, I'm playing that because yesterday I discovered we were going to lose $2,000. And we were going to lose it really quick if we didn't do something like immediately. And uh, so I said a prayer. And I wished upon the bright and morning star in my prayer. And uh, my prayer was answered today. And I'm going to talk about that during this broadcast. Because it is a most remarkable occurrence. You've all heard me tell you that I just trust in God and do what I believe to be right. And if I'm wrong, I get smacked back real hard. And if I'm right, God puts in my path whatever it is that I need to complete my task. And one of those miracles has just happened. is a gift or two, and one of them is this, it has the power to make a wish come true. When you wish upon a star, make 
bet you're all just uh, dying to hear this story. <laughs> and um, it's, it's quite a story. I've told you about our television project. And uh, donations have been trickling in. And by trickling in, I mean really trickling in. There's a lot of you out there who really should be ashamed of yourselves who partake of the work that we do, but never, ever, ever contribute. <clears throat> and that's something you have to work out with your own conscience. All I can tell you for sure is that if you don't support your own cause, your cause is not likely to be successful. In our television project, there is a new technology out that CNN is already using. It's the first time that top-of-the-line broadcasting technology is available to people like you and I for a price. What would normally cost around a half a million dollars, now you can get for between six and 15000 and I'm not joking, ladies and gentlemen. When you watch CNN tonight, you're seeing the same technology being used on CNN as I am talking about right now. Over a year ago, Pooh and I went to a video <coughs> oh, what, a expo, a video expo in Los Angeles. And all of the newest, greatest, most expensive most beautiful, fantastic television and video equipment was there on display. And the thing that caught everyone's eye and caught my eye and caught Pooh's eye and caught just everybody was drooling over this was something called Trinity. And as we watched the demonstration take place in front of our eyes with the most beautiful video pictures and overlays and, and artificial sets automatically created behind the person who was doing the talking. For instance, on CNN, when you see 
someone standing in front of the White House and the dome, the Capitol Dome, or the White House Dome, or the Capitol Dome. I guess it's the Capitol Dome I'm talking about. When you see somebody standing in Washington, D.C., and you see the Capitol Dome right behind them, you're looking at Trinity technology. When you see uh, on uh, C-SPAN and in other places, uh, people talking and then all of a sudden a bar across the bottom with their name and, and uh, their affiliations and all kinds of things. That's Trinity Technology. When you see CNN and you see a television or a, a stock ticker going across the bottom, that's Trinity Technology. It can be done with other things that cost like a half a million dollars to set up a studio to be able to do these things in, in what's called broadcast technology or broadcast quality television. But now, an enterprising young corporation called Play Incorporated has created this technology that equals, and in many respects, is even better than this $500,000 studio that you would have to have previously to do it, has created a technology to where you can do it for between 06 and $15,000. You can spend more on it if you want, but that will do us just fine. And so we had planned to purchase it. And just a few days ago, we realized that they were having a promotional sale where we could buy the basic system, the basic system that would give us the most beautiful television capability, put it right in our hands, in our lap, so to speak, that we ever imagined we could ever have for $2,000 less than it would have cost us the day before and that it will cost us again January the 1st and after. And I look for a price raise too in the near future as people begin to discover this fantastic technology and begin to purchase it for major television networks and television stations across the country. CNN is already using it, as I've told you, and several others. But we didn't have the money. And I knew that even when we got the money, it would be neat if we could save $2,000, save our listeners $2,000, be able to purchase it for less than what we had uh, had counted on having to pay. And so we tried to lease it. And because of our peculiar situation, which you all are aware of, no leasing company would touch it with a 10-foot pole. And so we had to have cash, and we had to have cash tomorrow. Tomorrow. And that was yesterday that I was thinking of all of this stuff. So yesterday, it was the day after tomorrow. Today, it's tomorrow. The cash has to be in their hands tomorrow. And I was thinking of everybody in the world who might help us with this. And because the contributions had trickled in for the TV fund, we only have $625, period. Long way from the money that we needed. Long way. You see, what we needed would have cost us, ladies and gentlemen, $8,000 if we could get the money to them tomorrow, it would only cost us six. Now, when I'm saying only six, compared to eight, only six is really, really good. And around here, i got to tell you, two grand is an awful lot of money. So I was thinking of one particular person who might have the money and who might help us out. And I had asked Annie for the phone number, and she was running around the house frantically searching for the phone number. That was today. Last night, when I went to bed, I stayed up quite late worrying about this, thinking about it. What are we going to do? Are we really going to have to pay $8,000 for this equipment? Dear God, it would be so wonderful if we could get it for six. And save that $2,000. And then last night, I finally went to bed with no solution in my mind, and I said a prayer. 
And I said a prayer to Jesus, the bright morning star, and I wished upon that star with all my might that today I would have an answer. And Annie was running around frantically today looking for that phone number, ladies and gentlemen. The phone rang. I picked it up. And guess who it was? It was Rick. The person that I had thought of, that had come into my mind, that Annie was frantically running around looking for his phone number and could not find. We found his address and his fax number, but we couldn't find his phone number, and our fax doesn't work. He called right at that moment, and I said, thank God. <laughs> thank God. I said, you'll never guess what's going on here. And he said, what? And I said, Annie's running around looking for your phone number. And you called right out of the blue. And he said, oh, really? Well, I was thinking of you because we're putting, here's what he said to me. He said, we're putting together an internet site, a network, if you will, that will carry audio and video broadcasting and we want your show to be on it. I said, you mean the audio show, the hour of the time? He said, both, audio and video. I said, you know, Rick, this is just incredible because I was trying to call you because there's a piece of equipment that we absolutely have to have to, to, to make our television product the project come to pass to work. And we need $6,000 and we don't have it. He said, when do you need it? I said, we have to have it in their hands by tomorrow, which means it has to be Federal Express overnight. He said, let's do it. He said, I'll get my uh, office on conference call and we'll do it right now. And he did. And so the, uh, the company called me and said that uh, Rick's office had called him and assured them the money was on the way and that the unit had been ordered into production and should reach us sometime during the last week of January. So now you know how things work around here. If God didn't want us to do this television project, that would never, ever in a million years have happened.
And what is the rose, ladies and gentlemen? What does the rose represent? Anybody got an answer to that? What is the representation? Which is symbolized by a slowly opening American beauty rose. 520-333-4578. There was other good news today also. Craig Smith called. He wanted to know when we're going on the air with television because he wants to help us out by sponsoring the show. <laughs> you see how these things work? Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, good evening, Bill. Um, uh, in answer to your question about uh, the American Beauty Rose and Red Rose, yes. it has many meanings. Um, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, and that is, uh, uh, the uh, full symbol of the International Socialist uh, Society. But it, but it uh, also, I believe, uh, personifies perfection. That's correct. And what was the goal of the Lodge of the Illuminati? The perfected man. The perfected man. And what did they call themselves? The Illuminate. The, the Illumined Ones. The Illumined Ones. But before that became their, their, uh, their handle, so to speak, they called themselves the Perfectibilists. Okay, yes, that's right. I, I remember that now. Yes, the single red rose, the bud opening up slowly, stands for, or represents perfection, the, uh, the perfection of the human race, the ultimate evolution of man into God, the apotheosis of humanity, or international socialism. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Do I win a prize? Well, you certainly win my respect and admiration. <laughs> as, you, as you probably are, are getting the gifts of it, we don't have anything around here to give anybody. <laughs> I know, I was just teasing you when I said that. Otherwise, there would be a prize, but, yes. But actually, that's the best prize I could ask for, tell you the truth. Well, thank you very much. And thank you. And thanks, thanks for calling. So, <clears throat> you see, folks, <laughs> it also stands for the secret destiny of America. Because those who created this country created it to topple the kings and queens from off their thrones by giving the common man liberty. And if the common man proved worthy and could keep his liberty, his freedom, then that would be the new world order. If he could not, then it would mean he would have to be controlled, to be literally re-enslaved because he would be a danger to himself and to the rest of the world. And so the Illuminati are doing that now because the common man has proven that he more or less is exactly what they say that he is, sheep or cattle. Here's their, here's their tenet. A nation of world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals that do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. We are the wolves. And if they will be sheep, someone will eat them. Why not us? They are our legal and lawful prey. So you see, they gave us the most precious of gifts, liberty and freedom, and said, here... In the words of Benjamin Franklin, when he was asked, Ben, what have you wrought? He said, a republic, if you can keep it. They gave it to us on a silver platter, and we have given it back. If you really want to know what's wrong with America, if you really want to know what's happening to our country, if you really want to know why, go in your bathroom, close your door, and look yourself in the mirror. And the reason I told you to close your door is so that nobody will see the consternation on your brow when you discover what the problem really is. In the immortal words of Pogo, we have found the enemy, and they are us. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, folks, time for more questions. You heard the song. Now let's break it down, find out if you are listening and pay attention. In the song, it says that love is reserved for the lucky or the strong. What are they talking about? Who is the lucky or the strong? 520-333-4578. You're going to learn an awful lot tonight. And you're going to learn to pay attention to what you hear on the radio from now on. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Do you know the answer? Uh, I believe it. Would it be the ADEPs? The lucky or the strong? No, 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 no. Oh. No. Okay. The, the, adep, the adepts are the, uh, the, the uh, initiates or the... Uh, the sons of light or the brotherhood of man. That's the answer to one question I'm going to ask you tonight, but that's not the answer to this one. Okay. Th this, this, is, this is oppressed humanity crying out because they feel they've been wronged. And love, they can't have love. Love is reserved only for the lucky or the strong. Okay. Does that give you a clue? Uh, I better listen. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks. Good evening. Thanks for calling. Thanks for participating. 520-333-4578 is the number. If you know the answer or think you know the answer, call. It doesn't hurt to be wrong, but it's wrong not to participate. Because remember, folks, when we open the phones in this broadcast, it's a participation thing. And without your participation, we can't make this work. I'm doing this to help open your eyes so that you will see. And by golly, all through a lot of the classic literature, and I'm not talking just about the Bible, it makes reference to let those who can see, see, and those who can hear, hear. And if you can't see or hear, you're pretty helpless in the, uh, in the flood of those who can. 520-333-4578. What are they talking about in this song when they say, love is only for the lucky or the strong? Hello? Anybody home? 520-333-4578. Call me up and take a guess, you know? Uh, I can wait for you for a long time. We have another hour and a half to go. 520-333-4578. Is the number. It's an easy question. What does it mean when it says love is reserved only for the lucky or the strong? Remember what we're talking about. Remember the subject of the song. The title is The Rose. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. Uh, would that be the leaders? Those who uh, lead us? The leaders are? I need, I need you to talk a lot louder, please. Uh, President, did the President Clinton uh, was holding a red rose in uh, Time magazine what, back when he was elected? Yes, that was a symbol to the rest of the world that he is a socialist. That's what he was telling the world when he posed for that picture holding one red American Beauty rose. And, so the, and, and it wasn't an open rose, it was a rose bud. Well, that's one, one thing you could call it. How about the wealthy? Okay. How about the middle class? How about the people that have more than me and I, I want it, but I'm too lazy to work for it or for some reason I can't get it. Maybe it's not even my fault, but uh, I want it and, and I'm jealous of them and I don't think they should have all of that. I think they should give some of it to me. How about that? Uh-huh. And the, the cross with a red rose around it. Yes. Is there any meaning to the white rose? Well, there is in English history. Uh-huh. By the way, um, the John of the Bible, who wrote uh, John in the book of Revelation, yes. do you believe that he was an uh, initiate? Yes, there, there's no doubt about it. If you ever study the mysteries uh, and you read the esoteric uh, concealed message in the book of John, and in the book of Revelations, there's no doubt about it. And Paul as well? Paul as well, yes. Uh -huh. In fact, Paul is even more blatant than John. Paul uh, 
just uh, he just comes out and just admits it to anybody who who knows anything about the symbology of the mysteries. No. He has put out some uh, mind blowing information about the Bible, um, uh, such as in Psalms 118, it's the very center of the Bible. It's kind of like the, the whole Bible is a pyramid. Uh, at the very center is the mention of the cornerstone in Psalm uh, 118. Yes. The cornerstone could be the top of the pyramid. Well, who else is, what else is the cornerstone? Uh, well, it's the, uh, well, Jesus. Jesus. Preachers hate to talk to me. Yeah. Missionaries hate to talk to me. Sure. Because I ask them questions they can't answer. <laughs> and I point out things that they never knew. And it drives them crazy. I don't mean to hurt them. I don't want to hurt them. And I'm certainly not trying to tell them that they're wrong. All I'm trying to do is point out to them that in their ignorance, they have no right to preach to me. <laughs> By the way, your, uh, your signal from Maine is uh, fading out very, very rapidly. And I, I'm right in Connecticut. I'm not only a few hundred miles away from Maine. Well, that could be because of the skip. I've heard, I've heard someone say that the word Monticello, uh, the signal comes to Monticello, Maine. Yes. That Monticello has some esoteric meaning to it? Well, it, it does, yes. But that's not the, sub, it's not the subject of tonight's broadcast. Okay. <laughs> All right, Bill. Okay. Thanks for calling. So they're, they're talking about oppressed people who feel that they don't get any of the love. And in, in all of these things, if you listen to John Lennon's song, Imagine, he's painting a picture that to someone who is ignorant and doesn't understand how life really works, they would think that the world that John Lennon is painting is the most incredibly beautiful, wonderful world that you can imagine. No responsibility, no duties, you don't have to work, there's no religion, you don't have to answer to any moral code or anything, you know, and, uh, but they don't bother to think it out. Who's going to take care of them? <laughs> and if somebody's taking care of them, don't they then become their daddy? And don't you have to answer to your daddy? And when you're at home, what was the thing that you most wanted to do in your whole life? Even though you loved your daddy, you wanted to get out from under his control and get out on your own. Socialists don't think these things through. They equate wealth with love. Love in this song is wealth, ladies and gentlemen. Wealth. 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 They believe it's life itself. And so they call it love. It appeals to people. They fall in love with the song and the words to the song and they have no idea what they're listening to or what it means. The lucky are the strong. Those are the people who have made it in life. They've struggled. They've conquered. They have made a place for themselves. They have a home. They have a meal on the table. They are the lucky or the strong. From a socialist point of view, that's a very bad strata of society because they're keeping you from having it. See, these people never follow it through. They don't understand. Nobody's keeping them from having it. The fact that someone goes out and works hard and makes a place in this world and establishes themselves and is able to bring home the bread for the family and put a roof over their head and clothe them and have a car and a television if they want to. That's not depriving someone else of having it because they have the same opportunity. The same opportunity in this country today, everyone has exactly the same opportunity. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your story is. I will not listen to any white. I'm black. I, my parents were poor. I'm just poor white trash. I never had a chance. Baloney. It's a lie. I'm handicapped. I'm handicapped. So what? I got one leg. I can show you paraplegics who are making their own way in this world, earning their own money, doing quite nicely, thank you. 
because they would not accept being told that they were helpless and that they were going to be somebody's dependent for the rest of their life. They figured out a way to make a living. Yes, holding a pencil in their mouth, pecking on a computer, the rest of their body dead, lifeless, useless, but not worthless. And if you really want to take a look at somebody, look at Stephen Hawking's. One of the greatest minds in the world teaches in Oxford. Read his book. Read his books, I should say. And then tell me how helpless you are. It is a lie. It's all in your own mind. It is the wine... It is the wine, wine, and I don't mean W-I-N-E that comes in a bottle. I mean the wine, W-H-I-N-E, of a lazy person who does not want to pull his or her load. Children, if you will. What is the winter? What is the winter that they're talking about? 520-333-4578 In the winter, far beneath the bitter snow. What is the winter they're talking about? 520-333-4578 Good evening, you're on the air. Hey Bill, um, I had to leave the short way. Um, did you get an answer for the uh, question about the roads? Yes, now we're asking what is the winter? What is signified by the winter in the song? Oh dear, that I don't know. I was going to say, uh, as far as the rose is concerned, Rosicrucianism. Well, no. Uh, the Cross, Order of the Rosy Cross. No, those, those are the rose impaled upon the cross. Ah. Uh, that stands, well, that's another thing that I've covered before in the mystery series, but we'll talk about that another night. Right now, I need to know, what does the winter signify in the song, The Rose? Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. And I'm giving it a try. My goodness, I'm not going to bite your head off. Participate. Give it a try. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. And if you get it wrong, you should not be embarrassed. Most people in this entire world don't know the answer to this question, but I know that some of you in this audience do. If you've been listening to this broadcast. For as many years as I've been doing it, you know what it means. The winter. The winter, ladies and gentlemen. What is the winter? The winter of our discontent. <laughs> the winter could be said to be the dark ages. The winter could be said to be a capitalistic society that frowns upon socialism. The winter could be living under a king or in a republic. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, yes again. Um, I believe that the winter here refers to being obscure. They have to remain in obscurity to achieve their goals. You got it. That's exactly right. Okay. It means living in a society that will not accept socialism, does not accept it. So you have to go underground. And where is underground? you got the answer to that, too. What's the rest of that verse? Um, can you repeat the verse, please? In the winter, far beneath the bitter snow. Oh, what, what's the bitter snow? Yeah. Mm. What's the bitter snow? Coldness. Cast them out. The, the, the fact that they're ostracized? Yes. Okay. But, but what is it that's doing it? Um, what do they refer to as the bitter snow, the coldness that will not accept them? Well, well the, the, the people that they wish to win over or, or, or dominate, actually. Yeah, they want to, don't ever believe they want to win anybody over. The whole goal of socialism is domination. It is not equality of the masses. No, but, but, but as we see the pattern develop now, they, they do try to win people over through the buzzword of love, the people who love. You know, only we have the compassion and the loving compassion 
and you know, but it, but it is only a use or a ruse to you know eventually dominate them. Yes. You know, they'll, they'll eat their lunch eventually. <laughs> Who do they hate more than anybody else in the world? People who think, yes, but uh, but not on an intellectual level. Uh, well, like, you're you're kind of on the right track, but you're you're sort of off of it also. Yeah. Well, you're sort of leading me too. So it's it's uh, individuality. Okay, very good. I I like that answer. Individuality, Republican government. Yes. Um. As a matter of fact, I was reading an article today. Uh, Ray Harrison in New York Post, he, he, he said something and, you know, he, you know, he, he said something about, you know, America being, you know, a democracy. You know, it just, you know, it, it just goes to show you you can't get away from that term. Well, you can get away from it. Come to my house. It's never, never mentioned here. <laughs> uh, so, well, neither at my house either, but, you know, but, but in, in, you know, you're so right when you say, whenever you hear Bill Clinton talk about, you know, anything, it's always about democracy. And, um, I, I posed a bet to a friend one time that it would be interesting to see that if during all, you know, he, you know, during every major speech he makes that, that's not required of him, mm -hmm. the State of the Union address or his report, um, that he will use only democracy when describing America, but when he is before both houses of Congress, he would generally tend to use the word Republican or Republic. I, I was wondering if anybody has any thoughts on that idea. Well, no, let's stick to the uh, to the problem at hand here. Okay. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay, who has an explanation for the bitter snow? What is the bitter snow? The bitter snow. Remember when, uh, when, when, when somebody, I don't know if all of you ever used this or not, but we certainly did in my youth, or in my younger days, I should say. If something, if somebody was trying to fool you, they were giving you a snow job, weren't they? A snow job. So what is the bitter snow? Anybody got an answer for that? Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Somebody was trying to fool you. They were casting over the truth a layer of snow. The snow hides things, doesn't it? The whole world looks different after a snowfall than it did before, and then it will afterward. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, yeah, Bill. Uh, the bitter snow would really be. Social, the socialist, socialism. The bitter snow is socialism, yes. And it's covered up with a deception, isn't it? That's correct. And underneath this deception is the secret, the real secret, that they're hiding from the rest of the world. Which is extremely bitter. Yes. That's my comment. Okay. Thank you. What is the seed? Bye. In the midst of winter... Beneath the bitter snow lies a seed. Lies a seed. What is the seed, folks? The bitter snow is the fact that they have to exist in secrecy behind a veil of deception. It's bitter. They don't like it. It's hard. They can't live in their perfected society. But what is the seed? What is the seed, ladies and gentlemen, that they're talking about? In the winter, far beneath the bitter snow, lies a seed. 520-333-4578. Who's got the answer? Who has... Uh, even what they think might be part of the answer? Give me a call right now. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. What is the seed, ladies and gentlemen? What is the seed? The seed. Remember in the mysteries, I gave you all this before. What does Osiris represent? Osiris represents the doctrine. Isis represents the church. The mystical union between the doctrine and the church produces the what? Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. Hi. Would the uh, seed be socialism? No, the seed is not socialism. The seed is... Uh, well, did you hear what I just said about Osiris and Isis? No, I had the radio 
turned off Okay, well, Osiris in the Mysteries, if you listen to my series in the Mysteries, you know that Osiris represents the secret doctrine. Isis represents the church or the lodge. When the secret doctrine is revealed and practiced in the church or the lodge in secrecy, it is a mystical union which produces what? What is the child of Isis and Osiris? Uh, Horus. Horus. And what does Horus represent? Uh, the lost word of Freemasonry? It represents the adepts, uh, okay. the Illuminati. Okay. The children who are working behind the veil, the thousand points of light, in the winter, far beneath the bitter snow, lies the seed that with the Son's love... What is the Son's love? Do you know that? Spelled S-U-N-S. Right. Well, okay, then the seed would be um, all this coming to fruition? No, the seed is the Illuminati. Oh, okay, okay. They're the seed that has been planted with the mystical union between the doctrine and the church, Isis and Osiris, from which will sprout the New World Order. Yeah, Their work will bring it about. All right. They are the seed. They are the children of the light. Very good. I got it now. You got it? Right on. Okay. Thanks, Phil. You're welcome. God bless. God bless you, too. What is the sun's love? In the winter, far beneath the bitter snow, lies a seed that with the sun's love... Five two zero, three 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 four five seven eight. What does the sun represent, ladies and gentlemen? What does the sun represent? You all know the answer to that. What do we call the Illuminati? The philosophers of what? And what does that what stand for? <laughs> what is the sun? The representation of the sun in the heaven? Hello? Anybody home? 520-333-4578. I can't believe I've been teaching you for this many years and nobody knows the answer to these things. These are basic questions that were covered in every episode of the Mystery Series. Ah, somebody chickened out. <laughs> Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, yes, Bill, this is Annette in Barnesboro. Annette, Annette, I need you to talk a lot louder. I can barely hear you. I'm sorry, uh, the sun represents the light, doesn't it? The light, but what is the light? Well, uh, Lucifer. What did Lucifer do? What is the metaphor in the Garden of Eden? The, uh... What was the light? What did Prometheus give to mankind? Well, I don't know about Prometheus. Prometheus is Lucifer. It's just another metaphor for Lucifer. I see. Uh, well, he, according to my understanding, uh, Lucifer seduced Eve and produced Cain. No, nope, that's wrong. Uh, Remember, we're talking in the mysteries. We're not talking about what you believe in your personal religion. We're talking about the people who follow the teachings of the New World Order. They don't believe in God or Lucifer or the devil or any of that. They, have, they, they believe that these are all metaphors for secret esoteric truths. Well, I, well, then I must say that that is a layer below the higher adepts because the higher adepts do believe. No, they don't. They believe that man is God. That's their whole premise. Man is God. And through the use of what this son's love represents, man will conquer the universe and will live forever. That's the promise of Lucifer in the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, and ye will not surely die. Well, because he was talking about... You're trying to mix the teachings of the mystery schools with what you believe in your personal religion, and the two are not synonymous. No, that's what you believe in your personal religion. And you're entitled to believe that. But in their, in their writings, that the world 
that they are going to bring into being. That the philosophy that I'm discussing uh, uh, is manifested. They they actually and yes. What you believe in your personal religion has absolutely nothing to do with the teachings in the mystery religions. It has absolutely nothing to do with the world that they wish to bring about. Yes, but they're layers. And that, and that that's what you believe in your religion. Okay, you must what keep... What I'm saying is that what they teach at different levels is not the same thing. What I am revealing to you tonight is what is taught at the very highest level. Well... This is not the place to dispute that, but I would like to mention something. When you had said that they brought us the Republic as an experiment, um, what, you, what you were indicating is that the Illuminati gave us America, and I, I would disagree with that. I believe that there was a time... You're entitled to disagree with it. Well, I mean, I believe... That but this, this is not the subject of tonight's broadcast. I see. I see. All right. Thanks. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this again. I've said it a million times. I'm not here to argue your personal theology. Do you know how many churches there are in this world and how many different religions? And all of them claim that all of the rest of them are wrong and only they are right. What I'm talking about to you tonight has nothing to do with any of those religions. And I have done the research, I have documented every single bit of this. I